All right, so once again, I'm Matt O'Brien. My project is the Internetwork Management Program. Reminder of what the project is, it's a tabbed Telnet and SSH client for um, Linux and Unix desktop environments and specific features to aid in Internetwork management, such as saving router configuration, restoring their configuration from a text file, and of course, it's written in uh, Perl, Perl TK for the uh, graphical window manager. So, status, client works, it does what it, you expect it to do, it'll connect to devices, save configurations, restore configurations. Um, I made some changes to make it look a little bit more professional. There's now title bars on the windows. Um, it's starting to look more professional and less like something that a college kid threw together, although it still kind of looks like that, but it's getting better. And also I wrote a uh, script to um, test the develop the um, environment of the machine that's being run on, so if you're missing some uh, dependencies, some Perl modules, it will tell you what you're missing and it will provide instructions on how to install them. So try to make the software as idiot proof as possible. So some more things I've done, I have set up uh, key bindings, so everywhere there's an OK button that appears in the graphical window, you can also mimic that function by hitting the enter button. So you don't need to click anywhere if you're typing, just type in, hit enter. Other, another feature, this is what I call my semi-dynamic resizing feature, because the widget in which the I.O. is conducted, um, it doesn't uh, resize very well. Um, if you dr change the window size by dragging around, the widget doesn't like resizing. So the best thing I can do is allow the user to set the height and the width at the window when they generate the program. Um, this is not a, a failure of my code, it's a failure of the, uh, the widget that I'm using. So maybe a, a pet project in the future might be to submit a fix for that and see if we can get some dynamic sizing on that. Um, another thing I've done, uh, disconnect function. Um, so if you have a connection to multiple devices, you can hit file, disconnect, and it will clear all your connections. And also some of you may remember um, last time I talked about a bug um, where the program didn't exit properly. That has since been corrected if you choose file exit from the menu. If you click the little X button in the corner, the bug still exists. Um, I'm looking for a way to uh, get some subroutine to, to um, take effect when clicking the file exit. So let's talk a little bit because I've made some progress. I want to talk about why I feel my software is now better than any other software for this kind of network management. First thing I want to talk about is timeouts. So the devices here at RPI, the routers and switches, they have a timeout value of 20 minutes, which is a good thing because if I'm working on some de device and I go to lunch and I stay logged into this device and then if someone else wants to log in and do something, they can't because I'm logged in. So my connection to a device will drop after 20 minutes. The problem, if I'm working on multiple devices and maybe I don't touch a device for 20 minutes, it will log out. And in other tabbed programs such as Poderosa, and earlier versions of my software, that tab would vanish off your window. So um, in some cases, you would need to then close down all your tabs and rerun your connection script entirely. So I fixed that. My tabs now stick around. Even if the connection drops, you just need to click on the tab and type telnet to the IP address and the port of the device, and you will reconnect. So that, that's pretty cool. The other major thing, the no shutdown thing. So, uh, a Cisco router has Ethernet interfaces, which are shut down by default. If the device is reloaded, all its Ethernet interfaces are shut down. This is also usually a good thing, especially, you know, in a in a production network. Um, you know, you don't want devices, you don't want interfaces coming up that uh, you don't want to be up because then you know someone can ping sweep you or. You know, it, it exposes a security loophole. So it's good that they're shut down. Again, um, some problems, um, especially here at RPI in the classroom setting where we share devices. Um, you know, 
when I come in and I want to work on a set of devices, I have to first erase the uh, configurations that the previous student left in them and then load in my configurations. So when I load in my configurations, all my router interfaces are shut down. And normally I would have to go in manually to all six of my routers and turn these interfaces back up. So the way I fix this is by inserting the command to turn an interface on is no shutdown. In Cisco, commands are reversed by adding no to the front of them. So the shutdown command shuts an interface off. So no shutdown turns an interface on. It's kind of silly. But. So now my software, when you save your configurations to a text file, it will insert no shutdown after every interface configuration line. And this is really brilliant because if the interface was supposed to be shut down to begin with, then immediately after that no shutdown command, there will be the shutdown command, which it, it is supposed to have. So at the end of the day, when you load in your configurations, only the interfaces you want to be up will be up. The ones that are supposed to be shut down will stay shut down. So still to come, my next major project is going to be moving towards making this client more universal. Um, rather, because in RPI we shortcut because we have pod numbers, so I have some of the information. It's hard-coded into the program to connect to um, various devices. So I'll add features to um, so that you can have a macro of commonly stored devices. You can manually input the IP addresses of the devices you want to connect to and then execute that macro and connect to all those devices at once. Um, the other thing I want to work on is packaging, uh, distributing this as a .dev or .rpm package so to uh, streamline installation. So, that being said, um, my contact information is here. Uh, special thanks to all these people. I'd like to point out uh, Tim Horton, Joe Doherty, and David Doria, who I don't see offhand. Um, they've all been uh, giving me quite a bit of help with this project over the past couple of weeks, so thanks to them. Of course, thanks to everyone. Hackathon was great. I got a lot of work done. And, okay, let's do a demo. So. So when you start it up, uh, doesn't look so good on, ah, uh, looks all right. So hit file, connect. So this is what I was talking about with the uh, resizing. Um, the best I can do is allow you to enter in the height and width of the window because if I later go up here and maximize it, it won't resize. So let's uh, connect to a pod. As you can see, it generates the tabs for my seven routers and my four switches. And so here's my, you know, my router prompt. You know, I can run commands here, whatever run something that's actually a command. And, you know, it's just, it's a telnet session to my routers, and uh, it works great. Um, if I wanted to do something else, like save, first of all, I disconnect to the devices when I run other functions, because these save and restore contain um, code to automatically connect to the devices and execute their configuration. So if you have an active connection to them, it won't work. So for example, the save, um, enter in the pod number you want to save, and the file name. It does take a while because it has to go through all 11 devices and uh, propagate the configuration. So I see I'm running short on time, so I'll, I'll cut this a little short and uh, take any questions. Please. Can the tabs store information um, about what they're connected to? So like in secure CRT, when your connection to a certain device dies, all you have to do is hit enter once and you're connected right back in. Can you do something similar? It doesn't right now, but uh, that's certainly not outside the realm of possibility. That's a great suggestion. Thank you. Uh, I think the feature where it inserts the no shuts is the greatest thing ever. That is the most annoying thing to do. I know. I, I thought so too. We have new scripts to do that. Do we? Yes. <laughs> I'll do one. Yeah, I'll do one. Thank you. Uh, with regards to not being able to run like I think it was save while you're connected to a um, while you're connected to a device. Right. Um, is there any way that you could like check and then not run the connect if you are connected to a device? It seems like an unusual limitation. Uh, um. So 
connecting to the device connects to it and pipes the telnet prompt out to this window so you can run commands. When you run one of the automated features such as save restore, it logs into the this is all controlled from Perl. It logs into the device, it issues the command, it disconnects from the device. So it's very fast. You don't actually see any interaction in this window um, of it connecting to the devices because it's all hand it's handled automatically. Um, I mean, I guess I could uh, have it just send the command to each of the tabs while you're logged in and capture the configuration that way. Um, there's not really a... Uh, I mean, there's a little bit of advantage to that because you can follow along with it and see what it's doing, but um, if a function like the save or restore fails, it does give you an appropriate error message saying, you know, I died connecting to this device trying to save the configuration or trying to restore it. Can you post the uh, uh, Oh, I was going to say, um, you could solve both that problem and um, your resizing problem by using a pseudo terminal that the actual telnet session is connected to, and then, then you get it all in your program first, and you can send it out over the pseudo terminal to the emulator. But also, you would be able to restart the terminal emulator without uh, restarting your session, and you would be able to uh, like send and receive from it without it appearing. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely look into that. Thank you. Can you post your code to other Cisco Academy so that let them fix the...